Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day's been going great. Mine's been really awesome and we have a spicy video today guys. We are talking about 10 players that need to leave their Overwatch League team right now and join a different one for season two. Now this idea randomly just popped in my head and I really wanted to make this video because it sounds very exciting. There's a lot of players on a lot of teams in the league right now who are really good who might not get necessarily so much playtime or the respect that I think they deserve on the team that they're on. And I think overall they would do much, much better on a different team. So if this video's got you excited, be sure to drop a like on it. Let's try to get up to 2000. And also, if you guys enjoy Overwatch League content, be sure to click the red subscription box. I upload two Overwatch League slash Overwatch World Cup videos every single day. Pretty much anything that has to do with Overwatch esports, you'll find on my channel daily. So if you want to stay updated instantly with any news, be sure to turn notifications on and subscribe. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. So overall guys, there's about 130, 140 players in the Overwatch League. But there's a problem with that number because while there's only 12 teams and only six starting positions on each team. That means out of the 130 slash 140 players, only 72 players are guaranteed to start for their team or at least get starting time. And that leaves around 50 players in the league who aren't starters. They might still get some play time, but most of them don't really get to go on the stage all that often. And sure, yeah, maybe some of those players don't deserve to go on the stage all that often because they might not be that great of players. But here and there, out of those 50 players, you can definitely find some who do deserve to be on that stage a lot more than they get to. One, for example, being Shadowburn, who I know all of you guys already know, he's on this list. I'm not going to tell you where he's at on it, but yeah, he's definitely on it for sure. He's pretty much the perfect player for this list. Yeah, he got some starting time throughout the beginning of the league, and he played very well, but eventually that starting time was cut to like zero in favor for somebody who, yeah, might have been better than him, but that doesn't change the fact that Shadowburn would be an absolute beast on any other team in the Overwatch League if he had starting time. So today we're going to focus on a lot of players who didn't really get much start time in season one, but we know are great and can potentially be carries on other teams. Now that's for most of the people on this list though. We still will have some on here who are decent starters that I think will just do much better on other teams. So now that you guys understand my philosophy behind this list, let's go ahead and hop into number 10. We have Factor Fiction from the Houston Outlaws. Now Factor Fiction is a pretty veteran player. He's been around the scene for a very long time. Prior to the Overwatch League, competed for FaZe Clan. He also competed for Team USA in the World Cup 2017, where they went decently deep and ran up against the South Korean team and almost beat them. So prior to the league, he's definitely got a decent track record. Now, the issue for him was that he actually didn't get picked up at the beginning of Season 1 either. He was picked up in the middle of the season by Houston Outlaws. And while, yeah, maybe he's not the best main tank in the entire Overwatch League, he's possibly a good starter, especially in a world where there's teams who do lack in a main tank and they have a lot of Western players on their team. One specifically being the Florida Mayhem, who right now have Awesome Guy and Swoosh, two players who didn't really pan out how they wanted to. Factor Fiction could easily join the Florida Mayhem and possibly relieve both these players and bring them top level main tank play for Season 2. And outside of the Florida Mayhem, Factor Fiction could have easily been looking at some expansion teams coming into the league this season. That's six brand new teams looking for a new main tank to join the league with them for the first time. And the fact that he's been in the league and he does have experience playing in it, that would definitely give him a bonus out of any other main tank not in the league. So I do think Factor Fiction could possibly thrive on another team. And that is why he's number 10 on this list. Now moving on to number nine, we have Logix from the Florida Mayhem. Now Logix is definitely in an interesting spot when it comes to the league. When he first started out in the very first stage, he wasn't all that good of a player. A lot of people were like, oh wow, he's just never been good on land and he's continuing to play very lackluster like. And because of this, a lot of us wrote him off as being a good DPS player. But then stage two came and Florida Mayhem looked pretty decent and it was because Logix was having to break out performances every single game, carrying the team. He honestly was looking like a superstar on the Widowmaker and Tracer, one of the best in the league at the time. But unfortunately, then transitioning into stage three, it seemed like he burned out, he got a little depressed, and he just didn't want to play. And then around the same time, they picked up Say a player, and this was pretty much the end of Logic's run on Florida Mayhem as a starter. But I definitely do believe with what we saw in stage two, that flash of greatness from Logics, he could join another team in the league and be a very deadly DPS player. Specifically on an expansion team that would want to pick up some Western DPS players, Logics would thrive. And then there is one other specific team in the league already that could really use Logics, and that would be the Houston Outlaws. I think a potentially good trade for both teams 
would be to send Fact Fiction, which I already mentioned earlier, over to the Florida Mayhem, who does need a main tank, for Logics, over to the Houston Outlaws, who kind of do need a Tracer slash Widowmaker player, who could kind of give Linkser a break from the hit scan and let him be that true flex that he wants to be, in my opinion, and cover the heroes like Hanzo, Genji, Farah. If Florida Mayhem and Houston Outlaws were to do this trade, I think they would come out better than they are right now. Now, of course, that's not the only option for Logics. I think he would do good on many teams as long as he had a starting position, and they weren't terribly bad like the Florida Mayhem was for most of the season. And that's going to be it for number nine, Logics. Now, moving on to number eight, we have Kalios from the Boston Uprising. Now, Kalios is kind of a victim of unfortunate circumstances, and the unfortunate circumstances just know. The guy's a god. He came out of nowhere and shocked the entire world. Nobody knew he would be that good. I don't even think the Boston Uprising had a clue. Everyone figured, all right, Kalios is going to be the starter in the off-tank role for the Boston Uprising no matter what, and he would probably be one of the better players, since if you go back to the beginning of the season, he was the only one who had a decent resume, competing for top Chinese and Korean teams, hit rank one on the ladder multiple times in the past. He seemed like the guy that was probably going to carry this team with like Gamsu and maybe Stryker. Well, that didn't happen because no, when he got his chance, he took everything away from Kalios. He became the instant starter with his flashy and genius plays. And because of that, we saw Kalios take a seat on the bench and he's pretty much been there all season long besides a couple games here and there. Now, I still believe that Kalios is actually pretty talented and the times that we have seen him, he was pretty good. He just wasn't as good as Note, who is a freaking superstar, top three off tank in the league. So because of these reasons, I believe Kalios could definitely thrive on a top team that needs an off tank. Looking at a team like Dallas Fuel, he could be a huge upgrade for them. Obviously, Mickey is great at Brigida, but he can't really play that full off tank role, which includes Roadhog, Zarya, Diva, which I believe Kalios could definitely do. So he could be a huge acquisition for the Dallas Fuel or just any team, whether it's expansion or not, who needs an off tank. Given a chance, I think Kalios could prove himself in the league for sure. So for that reason, he's number eight. Now moving on to number seven, we're back to the Houston Outlaws and this time we have Spree. Now I'm sure most of you guys expected to see Spree on this list just because he's so freaking good as Zarya. My god, he's insane. It's honestly crazy how good he is and I feel like Houston Outlaws should give him a chance in the starting role because Cool Matt, yeah, he was decent throughout the league, but like after stage one, Cool Matt never wowed me again. It was just like consistently average play. Nothing you would really expect expect from a top tier Overwatch League diva. Now, I'm not saying he was bad, but he just kind of like disappeared. He didn't really do anything big. It was very similar to Rockus. Barakas did a little worse than Cool Matt, in my opinion. And who knows, Spree's D.Va could be good. I mean, if he's that good at Zarya, you would think he'd be able to play other off-tanks at a high level, at least given the chance. So I guess it's kind of a whole nother topic to discuss, but if Spree did get a chance to play for the starting role of Houston Outlaws, he possibly could take it away from Cool Matt. Not too sure, but I do know if Spree was on another Overwatch League team, he would definitely be a pretty good player. Specifically now in a meta where there is a ton of Zarya being played. In my opinion, I think Spree is the best Zarya in the league right now, or at least top two, top three, no doubt about it. So there's no reason he wouldn't be at least good at D.Va. So that's why I got Spree up here on this list. Let's go ahead and move on now. Because we're talking about number six, and that's going to be Effect from the Dallas Fuel. Now, Effect is one of those exceptions where it is kind of a starter... Or is he even considered a starter anymore? I don't even know because Effect, he stopped playing in stage three because of, I guess, mental health issues. And then we never got to see him play again. And I feel like Effect, the reason why I'm having him on this list and the reason why I think he needs to leave his team is because I just feel like he would thrive and be better on a full Korean roster. Very similar to the situation that Fisher thought he was in. This might be a controversial pick, but I don't know. I don't really feel there's too much need to discuss it. Just really, that's it. I think Effect would do much better on a full Korean roster, whether that is an expansion team that decides to pick up all of Runaway or all of uh, Kong Du Panthera. Really doesn't matter. As long as he's on a full Korean roster, I feel like Effect could do better in the league and have less mental health issues. Because I think that was Effect's biggest problem in Season 1, just his mental health issues and being toxic within the team. If he was with a full Korean roster, I think it would be less toxic and would be easier for him to communicate, get his points across, and then the coaches would definitely understand him more. Be sure to comment down below about Effect and let me know what you guys think about this pick. And let's move on now and talk about number 5. And that's going to be Snillo from the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, it's pretty obvious that Snillo would be on this list. The guy's insane. His tracer play was incredible. During stage three, when EQO got suspended and he got a lot of play time, he really proved himself. He showed statistically that he was the best tracer in the entire league, even beating out Profit's stats on tracer, which is damn impressive because Profit had some incredible stats. Ah! 
Shit, man, I told myself I wasn't gonna mention profit in my videos anymore. It slipped, boys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, yesterday I didn't talk about profit in my videos once. But man, it's so hard not to. He's my boyfriend. Comment down below, Prophet is my boyfriend, boys, because that's what the cool kids do in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo! Anyways. <laughs> oh, man, you guys crack me up. Um, So, Snillo, incredible player. He proved himself on Tracer. It's just unfortunate that Carpe's on that team. And let's be honest, Carpe is one of the best DPS players in the world. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're on a team with Carpe, the chances of you starting over him are slim to none. Something that is very interesting, though, with the Philadelphia Fusion is they have two sets of starters that could just absolutely be top three in the league. Snillow and Shadowburn can go and join any Overwatch League team and just destroy together. Destroy. And then Carpe and Ikkyo, obviously, they've already done it. So they're just sitting on top of a gold mine of DPSs, and I feel like Snillow should definitely leave the Philadelphia Fusion he could thrive as a starter on any team, whether that is the Houston Outlaws, who will probably come up a lot in this video since they do still need a Tracer slash Widowmaker slash Hitscan Specialist, because Jake can't really do it, and Linkser is being held back because of it. So Snilla would definitely do great on the Houston Outlaws, or even the Dallas Fuel, which I've mentioned before, and lastly, of course, an expansion team, I would definitely target Snillo. And that's it for Snillo. Let's go ahead and move on to number four, which we do have a player who's actually very similar to Snillo. We have Dante from the San Francisco Shock. And just to get it out of the way real quick, Dante joining the Houston Outlaws would be perfect. It's literally what they need. Somebody who's flexible who can also play Tracer at a high level. Please, Houston Outlaws, contact Dante. He would be so good for your team. And Dante, like, I'll, I'll be the middleman. Listen, I will contact both of you guys. I'll get you together. And then, boom, magic happens. <laughs> like, seriously, it would be the perfect fit. But back to Dante and the San Francisco Shock. It's another unfortunate circumstance. And it's the fact that the San Francisco Shock just have so many good DPS players. He proved himself during the second stage. He was an animal on Tracer. But then Sinatra turned 18, and then Architect joined the team, and then there's also Baby Bay, and it's like, why do we have so many good DPS players on the San Francisco Shock? Really reminds me of the Philadelphia Fusion. Dante could be incredible on a lot of teams, as long as he gets starting time, whether it's an expansion team, Houston Outlaws, or even the Dallas Fuel once again. He could fit in anywhere that wants a DPS player that's good. That's pretty much it for Dante. And now moving on to number three, we're talking about the New York Excelsior. We have Janus. I feel like Janus is just somebody that everybody forgets about. Like he'll play one map here and there for the New York Excelsior and every other set. And it's like, oh yeah, they have this guy. And oh yeah, he's a pretty good main tank. Maybe not as good as Mano, but he still usually gets the job done for them. It's so weird. It's like, I don't even understand why New York Excelsior want to run two main tanks. I feel like they're just doing this still because we might as well give Janus some playtime to keep him happy. But let's be honest, Janus would be amazing on any Overwatch League team. Every single time he did play for the New York Excelsior, he did great. Sure, maybe they lost a couple games here and there, but other than that, the guy was pretty much unstoppable. New York Excelsior was unstoppable. And I'm sure somebody like the Los Angeles Gladiator is probably going over to the New York Excelsior saying, ring, ring. Hello, what are you doing with Janus? Can we have him? Here's $500,000, thank you. Or anybody else in the league who needs a main tank as well, so yeah. An expansion team, I don't know, man. If I was coming into the Overwatch League and I needed a main tank, most of them were taken, I'd be calling up New York Excelsior telling them, hey, we need Janus. And I'm sure Janus wants to start and play more. I mean, he sat back in the shadows of mana pretty much the whole season while well, New York Excelsior ended up choking, so he's probably like, I want to get the hell out of here. I want to be a starter. I want to prove myself. I don't want to be a sub to a team that chokes. So that's the reason Janus is on this list. Let's go ahead and move on now. And we have number two from the Florida Mayhem, Saya Player. Now, Saya Player by many was regarded as the best Widowmaker in the league, even though he only played half the season. Now, personally, I think Saya Player is definitely one of the best Widowmakers in the league, but I'm just not ready to say that he's He's definitely number one. He's probably top three, if not top four for sure. But given a full season played, he could definitely be the best without a doubt. He has the potential. He showed what he is capable of. He is insane at Widowmaker, and he's also insane at every other hit scan character as well. The guy's aim is just nuts. And for any team that might need a Widowmaker going into the next season, you know, like Boston Uprising, who really struggled with Widowmaker after, you know, DK, anyways. We saw Stryker play it a little bit in the playoffs, and he looked pretty good at it, but it would definitely be better if the Boston Uprising could put Stryker on that flex role, where he plays Junkrat, Hanzo, Tracer, all that good stuff, and then just have Saya player play the Widowmaker, they would be incredible again. Personally, I just don't have much faith in the Florida Mayhem going into Season 2. 
I don't think they'll be that good unless they can make some huge upgrades and just completely get rid of their coaching staff and get a whole new one. Because like, I don't know, what organization decides, yeah, let's go into the Overwatch League with six players and one coach. Eh, not a good idea. And they really don't seem like they've learned much from it. Yeah, they picked up Saya player, but they probably just threw a ton of money at him during the midseason. And that's why he ended up joining. I think Saya player should definitely leave and join a team like Houston Outlaws. No, no, maybe Houston Outlaws could really pick up a DPS player like him. They'd do great. I don't know. Do it, Houston Outlaws. Get a new DPS player. That's good, please. We all want to see you do good, and we all know that Jake is, you know, a great guy, but he's just, he's not that top player that you need to go deep in the playoffs. But in general, say a player could get a ton of offers from pretty much any team he wants. He could probably hand select who he goes to. So for that reason, he's number two on this list. And now moving on to number one. I saved the guy who you guys all knew was going to be on this list for number one. And that's Shadowburn from the Philadelphia Fusion. Oh my gosh, he's insane. He should totally leave his team and be a starter in the league because I would totally love to watch his Genji and Farah plays since he is so damn good at them. He's also good at Hanzo. He's also good at a whole bunch of other things, which he proved in the Russian World Cup run this year. There's no doubt in my mind that Shadowburn Shadowburn is definitely going to be leaving the Philadelphia Fusion in season two. I would sit here and honestly, I don't know, eat a fucking towel or something if he didn't leave his team. He is clearly, if not the best player in the league that is on the bench, he is definitely a top two or top three player on the bench in the entire league. If I was an expansion team, I would be throwing absolute bank at him just in order to get him on my roster. And if I was a team existing in the league that really needed somebody who could play some flexible projectile, I would be running after Shadowburn and saying, hey buddy, come give us a hug and join the good side because Shadowburn's incredible. We all know this. We've seen the clips from him. Actually, I take it back. I will not eat a towel if he doesn't leave the team because I feel like Philadelphia Fusion might throw like $800,000 at him and say, hey, just stay with us. Sit on the bench. We don't want to face you next season. And Shadowburn might have said because that's a crap ton of money. So I'm not going to eat a towel, boys. I take that back. I know you guys are crazy. And in the comments, you'd be like, oh, Michael should eat a towel. And you'll be saying it for like the next hundred videos. Like, no, I, I don't need any of that in my life. I'm already stressed enough. Just kidding, I'm not stressed at all. I love you guys. Thank you for watching my videos. Anyways, Shadowburn is literally one of the most veteran and experienced players in all of Overwatch history. I don't know. I have no idea why he's a benched player. Oh yeah, I do know why. EQL, but still, like, he would be so good on any other team. Somebody pick up Shadowburn. Get him out of jail, guys. And that's gonna be the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like on it. If this video can hit 2,000 500 likes, I will do the story of Dufran. My last video, I said I would do it if it got 3,000 likes. Unfortunately, it didn't. I guess I don't have that many, you know, loyal supporters or something. I, I'm not sure what it is. We're going to lower it down to 2,500, boys. If we get 2,500 likes on this video, we will do the story of Dufran. So drop a like on the video, leave a comment, let me know if my list was good, if it was terrible, if I'm dumb, if I'm smart, whatever it is, leave a comment down below. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more daily Overwatch League content. I upload multiple videos every single day. You'll never miss out on any news or anything, guys. Click that button, turn notifications on, and that's going to be it. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Triple upload tonight. Woo!